Coming up on today's episode of Airborne, an FAA rule increases simulator use for instrument training. A crop duster is targeted during spraying operation. And the AMA Expo 2015 is set for January. Welcome to Airborne on Aero TV. I'm Ashley Hale. The FAA has adopted a direct final rule amending the regulations governing the use of flight simulators to increase the use of these devices for instrument training requirements. In developing this direct final rule, the FAA notes that aviation training devices, known as ATDs, have advanced to an impressive level of capability. Many ATDs can simulate numerous scenarios, including various weather conditions and aircraft system failures. Devices that qualify as advanced ATDs will be authorized for up to 20 hours of instrument training time. Devices that qualify as basic ATDs will be authorized for a maximum of 10 hours of instrument training time. The FAA is also amending Appendix C to FAR Part 141 to increase the limit on the amount of training hours that may be accomplished in an ATD in an approved course for an instrument rating. The rule becomes effective January 20th, 2015, and there's a comment period open now through January 2nd, 2015. Crop dusting has always required a high level of risk management, but being shot at takes it to a new level. A crop duster in southwest Missouri was recently targeted by someone with a gun while spraying a field. It's reported the unnamed pilot had agreed to take some extra work from Lisa and Kevin Kingsley while their crop duster plane was down for maintenance. Last week, while working a field in Lawrence County, Missouri, someone shot at the pilot multiple times. When Lisa Kingsley arrived after receiving notification of the incident, she said she counted 16 holes in the wing and fuselage of the 1997 Thrush 510. She said the shots came within inches of bringing the plane down. Kingsley reportedly told a news reporter that the incident is being investigated by federal authorities. After the break, the AMA Expo 2015 is scheduled for January. Redbird Flight Simulations is dedicated to revolutionizing flight training by designing, manufacturing, and delivering affordable and innovative flight training technologies. Each Redbird device is designed to enhance the training experience for pilots of all levels, from student to ATP. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. Welcome back. If you'd like to be a supporter of Airborne Aero TV, our website or our podcast, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. The latest and greatest advancements in small unmanned aircraft systems and model aircraft technology will be a major component of the Academy of Model Aeronautics AMA Expo 2015. The annual event is scheduled January 9th through the 11th in Ontario, California, and offers attendees and organizations the opportunity to interact with exhibitors and experts in the field of model and remote control aircraft operation. At the expo, you'll find innovations that go far beyond the toy classification. AMA Expo will include more than 200 exhibitor booths. You'll be able to check out multi-rotors, unmanned aerial vehicles, recreational first-person view tools, indoor flying demonstrations, and much more. The expo will also feature an enhanced multi-rotor flying demonstration area sponsored by the International Radio-Controlled Helicopter Associations, children's make-and-take activities, a large static building contest, a swap shop, and exhibits by NASA. The Soaring Society of America and several other notable aviation organizations will also be in attendance. With some 2,000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, it's fun to look back and enjoy the places we've seen, the pilots we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. 
So what we did is develop a very rudimentary simulator, a few weeks of classroom training, a few weeks of hand-on simulation training, a few weeks of OJT, and ready to go. The K-MAX is a heavy lift remote controlled helicopter. And in this video, we see how pilots are trained to operate it. Here we see how simulation trains pilots to fly from the ground. Search supporting the K-MAX UAS on Aero TV's news channel. When an Orbital Sciences and Terry's rocket launch failed in a spectacular explosion last month, the damage caused extended beyond the obvious loss of the vehicle itself. The Virginia Commercial Space Flight Authority says that repairs to the launch pad on the Wallops Island site will take up to a year. According to reports, this assessment comes after the authority received a detailed engineering report following inspection of the damage. The failure of the booster and the subsequent explosion left a crater north of the launch pad. But water samples indicate there was no environmental damage to surrounding back bays or tributaries. The timeline and cost for repairs are still being finalized, but it's estimated that the budget for bringing the launch pad back to operational status will not exceed $20 million. After these messages, the Xavion app provides flight guidance in an emergency. ADS-V will be mandatory for most aircraft by 2020 in the United States, but you can benefit from ADS-V today with the Bendix King KT-74 Mode S Transponder. The KT-74 meets the global mandates for ADS-V out when attached to a suitable WASP GPS. Finally, the extraordinary story of the world-changing XPRIZE space competition is being told and illustrated with hundreds of insider photos in Jim Campbell's colorful new book, Beyond the Blue. Journey with Jim as he flies formation with spaceships, plays in zero gravity, prepares rocket racers, and documents the amazing first decade of the personal space race. Available this summer. Get your advance order in now by checking out www.kindredspirit.com. Welcome back. The Xavion iPad app has released a new version that the company says is a major enhancement to the product. The company says the new version provides a highway in the sky through a series of target hoops to direct you in the event of an engine failure. It will find the best airport within gliding range and show you the path to glide down to it. According to the website description, Xavion shows you the best hoops it can, even if you need power to achieve them. This way, if you have partial power or want to make a precautionary landing with power, you can. If you're in the hoops, you can follow them while gliding without power. The AHAR system has also been overhauled to work with the variety of sensors available now, from the Sage Tech Clarity to the eye level to the GPS and pressure sensor built right into the newer iPhones and iPads. Bristol Aircraft has officially accepted the appointment to represent the Bristol Lightsport Aircraft in North America. Tom Patton reports. Bristol Aircraft is an American company headed by Lou Mancuso which worked directly with the manufacturer to develop, customize, and standardize the aircraft specifically for the North American market. Mancuso said the company is excited to introduce American aviators to the airplane, saying, quote, In our flight schools, we've owned and operated several brands of LSAs. Without doubt, the Bristel is the very best, end quote. Bristel aircraft are backed by a two-year, 400-hour warranty. Conceived from the ground up for American aviators, designer Milan Bristella's creation has a 51-inch wide cabin, is extremely comfortable, carries a 600-pound useful load, and has a range of 600 nautical miles. In Bristella's words, this aircraft is what his heart created, hence the company logo, Wings with Heart. For Airborne, I'm Tom Patton. A rocketry club in southwestern Michigan spent two years converting a porta potty into a rocket. And last week, they launched the 450-pound outhouse on a short flight that could only be described as suborbital. The effort was dubbed Thrusting the Throne. And yes, there was a Facebook page for the event, which saw other rockets being launched throughout the day from a field near town. In a video posted on YouTube, the porta potty can be seen lifting off the ground, 
flying to an altitude of several hundred feet and then deploying parachutes to bring it back to the ground. It landed near some parked cars about 2,000 feet from the launch point. Thrusting the throne came just a day after Orion's successful first test flight. It's reported that about 30 people worked on the Michigan Rocketry Club project, from engineers to salespeople who raised sponsorship money to support the launch. And oh yes, similar to the Orion flight, the throne flight was also unmanned. Well, that's our program for Wednesday, December 10th. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember, Airborne is streamed three times a week and is always online. Join us every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for a new episode. And remember, the debut of Airborne Unlimited is now less than a month away. I'm Ashley Hale. Thanks for watching.